Leia. Of course, this is a beautiful monument. He stopped loving her today. Look. That's obviously his, fa his most famous song. That is a beautiful monument to him. And I love it. He's known as the possum and they have that written. <sighs> he he stopped loving her today. A nice little bench here. It's, it's a really nice tribute to him. Uh, he worked on this for months before he passed away, but it wasn't completed until obviously after he passed. He was born in 1931 and died 2013. April 26th of 2013. A lot of people consider him to be the greatest country music singer of all time he could tell a story he could hold you in the palm of his hand while he was singing a song being called the Rolls Royce of country music he had a hundred more than 160 chart singles in his name from 1955 until his death in 2013 Wow. He was married to Tammy Wynette, too, and there was a lot of uh, substance abuse, and uh, it was a very volatile relationship, but they made some really beautiful music together. Of course, when he died, he was married to Nancy Ann Jones. He was also in the Marines from 1951 to 1953. He heard country music for the first time when he was seven years old and given a guitar at the age of nine. His uh, influences were people like Roy Acuff and Bill Monroe. Lefty Frizzell, sure. And, and, and Hank Williams Jr. and Lefty Frizzell. Frizzell. He, uh, he, 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 that's who he put his, he tried to make his voice sound like. Well, they have him as a, a, a young boy there holding guitar. Whereas I remember uh, there was an incident with him on a rotting lawnmower. Yeah, Timmy Wynette had hit his keys and he wanted mm. to go get some more beer. And so he took the rotting lawnmower. And there is actually a video of him getting stopped by the police. And uh, One of the only people in, the, in, the, in the criminal history to get a DUI on a rotting lawnmower. <laughs> but a... Hey, Whenever someone is bound and determined to go and get their fix, it's going to happen, trust me. Me and Lynn both know that. We are recovering addicts. I mean, I guess we're addicts. We'll always be addicts. But we had our five-year anniversary um, back last week on um, April 18th. We cleaned for five years. We had a volatile <laughs> time, too, when we were using the... Together, we were able to, to beat it. <laughs> and now here we are traveling the country and making videos for you guys. And there's actually people that have come here and put their coins down. That's what they give you in AA for recovery is coins they've put in their oh, coins yeah. down. Oh, yeah. That's nice. And that picture of him and his wife. That's beautiful. Said that Nancy considered George his soul, her soulmate. They met on a, a blind date in 81, had no idea that someday she would save my life. That is so sweet. Sounds familiar. Yes, we can totally relate to this. Wow. 
Until his death in 2013, it was Nancy whom George Jones considered his soulmate. And Lynn, you're my soulmate. You're my soulmate. And thank you for saving my life. Thank you for saving my life. In, the king in 1959, heart. George Jones recorded White Lightning, which was actually written by the Big Bopper, and it actually changed his career, and it shot him into stardom. Woo! White, White Lightning. Lightning. Of course, you know, the Big Bopper died with Buddy Holly and Richie Valens. It was the day the music died. Rest in peace, George Jones. The possum, and may many of people have a drink for you today. Take this job and shove it. I'm working here no more. Okay, so we are here at Johnny Paycheck's grave. George Jones bought this plot for him, and um. I'm not sure if he, I'm assuming he bought the headstone. I don't know that, but I know that he bought the plot for him. Johnny Paycheck, you know, he was most notable for recording that David Allen Coe song, Take This Job and Shove It. That shot him into stardom in the, in the 70s. He was known as the outlaw movement back then. Like with like, Waylon Jennings and yeah, Willie Hank Nelson. Williams Jr. Yes. and Billy Joe Shaver. Merle Haggard, but in 1980, uh, Johnny Paycheck appeared on Austin City Limits and for the first time, and that was kind of like a, one of the highlights of his career. He felt like he kind of made it, but, you know, just, uh, well, not really like George Jones. Un unlike George Jones, he kind of let the drugs and alcohol get the better of him, and he was always known as the, the rule breaker. He wasn't going to be told what to do, and they sent him to prison. He served a prison sentence until the early 90s whenever he passed away. He passed away. 2003? Yeah, in, in, uh, in early 2000. And if you want to know where he's located here, George Jones is right there. And he's watching over Johnny right here. Yeah, um, after a stint in the Navy in the 50s, um, he was like, a harmony singer for Ray Price, um, and he worked alongside Willie Nelson and Price's band and the Cherokee Cowboys. Um, he's also featured as a tenor singer in Fair and Young, Roger Miller. He performed a lot with George Jones, which, I mean, they had, like, a connection, obviously. He legally changed his name to Johnny Paycheck. In 1964, his real name is Donnie Young. He was born in Ohio, but died here in Nashville. He had a lot of health issues because of his addiction to drugs. He said he had put his life in order after a, a prison stay. Um, he did end up contracting um, emphysema and asthma and died at the age of 64. And he, he had... a uh, a son and two daughters. Um, and like I said, this, this plot was donated by George Jones, which is just shows you how much George really, really cared about him. But I, I mean, Johnny Paycheck will go down in history for being an outlaw in the country music scene.